We are the country's st uh, largest state trade organization that represents the insurance industry. So all of our member companies are insurance companies that do business here in San or here, here in Texas. Um, and so basically we are, we're not a lobbying group. We don't lobby, uh, but we do provide information uh, on behalf of the industry and, you know, on a, you know, for our members, we provide them with the issues that are going on here in Texas and, and keeping them abreast of what's going on in the state as well, as far as regulations and, and things like that go. When it comes to rating insurance or, or looking at, at your insurance premium is what you pay every month for your uh, auto insurance. It could be your claims history, your driving record, how long you've been with the, with a particular company, um, and then kind of overall that, that, that big bubble is what's going on in your community uh, or your state or your zip code. Uh, we like to look at insurance as a team sport. Uh, so it, it writes risk, uh, not only the individual risk, but, what, but what's going on in, in the area. So are there all of a sudden a huge amount of, uh, you know, an uptick in uh, accidents and we're looking to the future and saying, okay, this area uh, you know, there's a lot of people that are speeding. There's a lot of people that are getting in accidents. You know, the frequency and severity are increasing. All of those factors go into pricing um, auto insurance. It's actually something that we've been looking at for maybe the past five or six years, to be honest. Uh, so over the last several years, we have seen uh, incremental increases in car insurance. And that has to do with, again, looking at those risk factors, everything from driving, but also natural disasters as a, as a particular area. Uh, prone to flooding, prone to, prone to hurricanes, prone to hail damage. Uh, all of those different factors come into effect that, that people, uh, you know, as far as pricing. Uh, the other factor that is the cost of vehicles, not only to repair, but to replace. If we think about our car from, from say the year 2000 or even 2005, we had plastic bumpers, we had aluminum bumpers, uh, we had headlights that maybe cost $100 to replace. Whereas now, if you look at cars, every single car has a backup camera, every single car has, has radar, every single car has sensors that are in the bumpers. Headlights could be as much as $1,000. Windshields, you know, the cost of windshields are going up. All of those factors come into play. Uh, so the cost to repair cars today, as opposed to 5, 10, 15 years ago, is going up. When you're rating insurance and you're looking at a car and you have a car that has, you know, all these sensors and this new technology, which is great. I mean, we want more safety. We want, you know, those backup cameras. We want the different kinds of safety features that are put into vehicles. But if the worst does happen and you are in that accident, it, it's going to cost to repair that. And so therefore that's going to be reflected in your cost to insure that particular automobile. If you look at it over the past couple of years, uh, you know, during the pandemic, there were insurance companies, the insurance industry gave out billions of dollars in refunds and rebates to, to their, uh, uh, to their customers. So that definitely plays a factor. But that's something that you should actually proactively do, and it's a good tip, is contact your insurance company and tell them, you know, change your mileage. You know, hey, I'm not driving 20,000 miles anymore a year because I'm not commuting. I'm staying at home. My car is garaged. Uh, all of those factors could also come into play. So you may actually save a few dollars uh, if, you're, if you're driving less. And so, but that's something you got to proactively do uh, with your insurance company is inform them that you're not driving as much as you were and, and you may you may see some savings. Some of those cost saving tips in addition to what we already talked about is is look for affiliation discounts. You know, call your call your insurance company and see if there's uh, discounts that you may qualify for. Look for something that's like an affiliation discount. Is is there something through your uh, college's alumni association that you may qualify for. They sometimes have discounts. Uh, did you take, you know, go ahead and spend the 75 or hundred dollars, whatever it might be to take a defensive driving course that may also lower your, lower your rate. Uh, if you have students, if you got kids that are in college or high school that are on your policy, we all know that that's going to raise your rates, uh, raise your premiums. Uh, but do they have good grades? Uh, you know, are they keeping their grades up? Some, some companies offer good, good student discounts. So that's always something that you can look into. Even if you're not buying a new car, if you're, you know, just, it's the new year, it's a good time to look at your policy, make sure you know what's in it. Go ahead and contact your insurance company or other insurance companies and see if you can get a better rate. Look at your policy and make sure that you have the right insurance. Do you have an older car that maybe you don't need full collision or full comprehensive coverage, which is that coverage that happens when maybe you're at fault in an accident. If you only have a car 
that's worth a few thousand dollars, is that something that you can afford to pay out of pocket to replace as opposed to paying that insurance premium every month? Uh, look at your deductibles. Are, are you able to raise your deductible a little bit with your insurance company um, to save a few dollars a month? But again, make sure that you have that, that money in savings um, that you can pay that deductible at a cost should the worst happen. Um, and another, a great resource is uh, the Texas Department of Insurance has a website. It is helpinsure.com. Uh, it's a really easy way and a good resource to shop the companies that do uh, business here in Texas. And, 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 you know, you can take a look at that. It's the diversity of natural disasters, actually. If you look at Texas, we have hurricanes, we have flooding, we have hail, we have tornadoes. Um, you know, it's kind of a, a melting pot of natural disasters compared to much of the other country, uh, much of the other parts of the country that maybe only have, you know, winter storms that, may, you know, may have, you know, although we don't have earthquakes like California does, but I think that's something that's really unique is just the different pockets of Texas and the different kinds of weather catastrophes that can impact the different parts of Texas.